All right, we are live. It's Bonding with Board Games, and I've got James Buckley in from Phalanx. Welcome, James. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Nice to be here. So real quick, I know we're going to be talking about Purple Haze. We'll talk about Phalanx in general, but um, for all the viewers, can you just uh, let us know where you are in, in time and space? Sure. Um, so my name is James Buckley. Yeah, I work for Phalanx, do a range of different things from them, look after the UK and US markets, a bit on the development side, a bit of advertising, a bit of marketing. Um, so a bunch of different stuff. Um, uh, spatially, I'm in uh, Peckham in southeast London. Mm. And um, one, well, Phalanx is an Anglo-Polish company, um, but I'm actually the only, currently the only employee of Phalanx based in the UK. Beautiful. Now, um, we're both also enjoying a dram. I've got a little uh, Bunahaben poured, so you may see me sampling my Bunahaben every once in a while. Um, yeah. What about you? I'm going for the Mortlach 16, which nice. is a, a really nice uh, dram as well. So I'm going to pour myself some, and we will make the conversation more liquid. Beautiful. Duplicated. Love it. Now we've uh, real quick. We've got a couple of folks already in the uh, in the chat here. Ah, cheers or Salancha. Uh, we've got Ron Nicholson from Newark, Ohio. He's in Vorpal Bite, who is a huge Vietnam. He loves that genre, so he is in. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we have movie sign. I don't know what that means, Vorpal, but uh, they're <laughs> day drinking again, Chief. Well, you know what. I don't usually drink at night, interestingly enough, for me. But yeah, a sample of a of a nice malt. Mm, mm, mm. So, James, let's let's transition right over first to this beautiful and evocative cover and title of Purple Haze. Um, you know, the Hueys coming over top, this beautiful yellow with the lovely silhouetted white. Mm. soldiers or marines i shouldn't say soldiers i was in the army and the marine buddies always say nope we're marines so yeah. um what kind of uh you know what the idea of vietnam even not a lot of companies are doing vietnam um i know you're going to show us some screenshots but kind of what was how did this come about you know the designer approached you or you guys saw him or yeah, the designer, um, Bernard Wazbowski, um, had been working on a game. So he's a, a love of um, computer games and miniature games as well as board games. And he'd been mm -hmm. playing uh, uh, an old game on the, com on the computer system, the Amiga, called The Lost Patrol. Mm -hmm. And uh, in that, there's a platoon um, in Vietnam that are, are, are lost and they have to make their way home. And that was kind of the gen genesis of, idea, of his idea, which is, can I make kind of a tactical combat game involving, uh, based on, on this kind of premise that there's this Marines uh, and they uh, they need to get back to their base, their Hueys have crashed. Um, and that was kind of the genesis of it. And he developed this system, um, which is, uh, as we'll probably discuss, kind of like a lot around how the, the tests work and the dice work and the combat work. And um, just through various his Polish and through various contacts he got in touch with Phalanx and uh, we tried it and uh, we, we liked the basis of the uh, the mechanics in the game so we kind of signed him up and been working on it for a number of years now um, developing it first of all starting with the kind of the, the basic mechanics around uh, how the traits work and how the dice system works and the actual movement and combat and fatigue and then uh, following that then we have uh, laid on top of it this concept of this kind of immersive storytelling narrative uh concept so it's not just like a tactical combat game it's, it's more than that and also then on top of that now making a campaign game as well so the different missions that you can do are linked both from a narrative sense and in the sense of the marines that are in your squad um, they can develop they get experience points uh, and become more specialized um, they can also take mental or physical injuries um, sometimes that will kill them sometimes um, that you know that, that they'll have to uh, retire from from the war due to mental stress so and that will retain uh, between missions as well so you have this concept of kind of like the, the missions and the marines grow together yeah, so that was, was something great, that we added yeah yeah the way it kind of rolls in that light role playing uh, very similar uh, in a lot of feel although not mechanics but ambush the idea that even some of the scenarios which i won't do any spoilers but the way they unfold and you make decisions a la almost like role playing or choose your own adventure but you're also then trying to shepherd your marines because they will grow and they'll get some extra little abilities as you can level them up from mission yeah. to mission yeah exactly and um yeah, this is kind of like we're, the, what you've been playing is kind of the prototype version. We're still 
working on many aspects of it um, and how we can make it more immersive and so on and so forth. And that, that narrative thing is something which is kind of re really core to the game now. Um, and, and we're looking at, again, how you, you know, how you might kind of like make motivations for um for you as a squad you're essentially a squad leader in the game so what is your motivation and when you when you come across a certain kind of situation which option are you going to go for and why and sometimes that might be because it's just there's just an obvious one to do or, mm -hmm. or you've got certain marines who are better at certain tests and it becomes obvious but other times it's like well why do i want to do this and so you know you might role play that yourself or we might also look to some mechanics that we might develop for that that was perfect yeah i'd run into uh one of the situations where I was sitting here with the with a couple choices. Again, I'll be vague, but it was: do I take my time and kind of recon the area just in case it's an ambush or a setup, or do I move quickly, rush in, and try to get out? And uh, you know, and then there's the levels of kind of if you're reading the scenario correctly, and I know it's still a prototype, but if I'm reading the scenario correctly and I make the right decision even if it doesn't quite go as planned, I'm a little bit better off than if I had just willy nilly, you know, ran in, Hey, you know, or whatever. And yeah. so I definitely felt like the decisions I was making matter. Yeah, exactly. And then you, as you're finding kind of like, I don't know which, which mission you've been up to, Bart, have you just done the first one so far? Yep. I was yeah. working on, so, the, on the first one. Yeah. So, I mean, you, you'll find in a few of the later missions that really kind of bites a bit more, for example, uh, your interactions you might have with, with villagers, um, that can have a consequence even mm. later on in, in that mission one, one way or the other. But your decision about how you might want to interact with them might be based on your own kind of like ideas of what you think these Marines should be doing in this situation as well. So that kind of creates the branching. Exactly. Yeah, it was perfect. And then, you know, I love the use of, um, well, we can talk about it a little bit later. We'll get into the, when a battle goes on, how a card is drawn and how they're placed. But yeah the feel of the m16 um versus the m79 the the thumper mm -hmm. um and the the ranges even the shotgun that the marines would would use and how your of course your ranges are displayed and you know the thumpers the grenade launchers so it can't be used up close but it can reach out a little further yeah the idea that if you empty a mag you can cover two areas i mean it's why don't we do this um do you want to screen share and show Maybe that overall would give them because you're the map you're working on felt I was in the army. Yeah. Light infantry unit. I was a medic. That map even feels the way it's gridded, it feels very Yeah. I, I mean I think, realistic. Uh, no, the map is meant to be realistic and um mm. it's based on um if I understand correctly where that um what, what was actually used at the time. So hopefully you can see the shared screen now. Okay. Oh so, sorry, let me bring it in. Hold on. All right, there we go. Great. So, I mean, just to give an overview of, of the game, um, uh, you represent a, a, essentially a squad leader in charge of a squad of uh, six Marines. Um, so kind of a, a small squad, but a, a squad nonetheless. And um, over the course of eight missions in, in the base game, uh, notwithstanding what will be in the expansions in the base game, you have these eight missions. It's your job to um, lead these Marines through the different missions that they encounter. And over time, you'll be able to, um, uh, through, through successful combats or through uh, certain things you'll do as part of the narrative, you'll get experience points and you'll be able to build up those Marines and, and make them stronger while trying to complete the mission. So each mission will begin with a, a, an introductory um, kind of scenario about what hap what's happening and what you have to achieve. Uh, and then it will be your choice as a group. And this plays between one and six. It plays very well um, solitaire because um, you're controlling these six Marines um, and you can, but it's not like a kind of a dungeon crawler where each of the Marines has got their own miniature uh, that you, you move separately. You, you, you're essentially making decisions for all the, all, all the squad. So it works well solitaire, but also it works well uh, with more than one player because you can kind of share out who's responsible for the Marines and, and share decision making. And what you'll be doing is trying to uh, move across the map and complete certain objectives um, all the while um, probably engaging in uh, one or several combats with, with, with VC uh, trying to complete your primary objective. So um, if you look at the map um, you'll see that we have these six marines and in the game you'll get about 20 different marines and each of them will have their own um, backstory uh, and different traits. So here we have um, uh, Cat Tamer and you can see on the left that there's different traits that he has, for example, uh, a survivability of four, a charisma of three, a perception of four, an intelligence of four and a willpower of two. 
or, or, or white uh, who's slightly low on the survivability but he's quite a charismatic and perceptive person mm. um, so they each have different personalities and then they are each have different specializations so in the base in, in the first mission uh, you'll have uh, one a specialized person for example a medic and the rest of them are cherries but then over the course of the game uh, you'll get the opportunity to um, get experience points and develop them and for example you might spend five experience points uh, once you've earned them to turn one of your marines into a scout and uh, that scout gets the v attribute so that means he'll be able to speak you'll have somebody who can speak vietnamese and mm. then once once a scout has got a bit of um once you've got that then you might spend more experience in a subsequent the end of subsequent mission and he becomes better targeting so not as vietnamese he becomes better targeting and better at taking cover so he's got more survivability so you add that to your marine and they become they go down this path of specialization and you have radio operators infantry men engineers uh, and diff different different sort of um uh specializations that, that they can have and they all can do different things for example the infantryman can use a, an m60 or the radio man can call in um the radio operator can call in airstrikes so that's your squad and then yeah you have you, um uh, a map and as you said bart there's like uh, quite inter interesting maps and there's um eight different maps and they all cover different territories um even down to um Hue ultimately and um for the tet offensive scenario yeah. Um, uh, yeah, and um, uh, what you'll be doing over the game is um, be given you're given certain missions. For example, in the first one, you you've crashed here, and we can read a bit of the narrative text if you like. But you've crashed here, sure. and your ob objective is get back to base. Um, but you've got these um, scenario, these waypoints if you like that you can investigate. Um, it's got in the right spot. These waypoints you can investigate en route. Um, so. Um, if you're interested, Bart, maybe as we've got a bit of time, I can quickly walk through what might happen in a particular uh, move or something, and we can discuss a bit more about the game. Does that sound Definitely. good? Definitely. Yeah, yeah. Walk it okay. through. Okay. All right. So the first uh, mission is called Crash. Uh, it's September 15th, 1967. So first of all, in the game, you'll get a bit of kind of introductory text, uh, which someone in the group, if there's more than one of you, will, will read out aloud. Uh, and then you'll have to decide what you, you, you need to do. So I'll do the briefing. You look at the wreck Huey. Thankful you survived the crash. He got hit somewhere over the jungle. You lost the pilot and the gunner just fell out. On the way down, you saw another the glimpse of the other Huey. You think he got hit too, but you can't be sure. You look around at your squad. Wild-eyed Marines fresh out of boot camp and sigh heavily. Shit, their first week, already a total mess. You've got to move fast. Got to get back to the base. The VC will be coming. You hope to find a clue as to what happened to the other Huey on the way back, but that's not your priority. Your squad is what matters. So that's your introduction. And then uh, what we're told is that your primary objective is to get back to base. Uh, and then you have secondary objectives, which is uh, if, if, if you choose to, to investigate um, these points of interest on the way back and you get given uh, rewards. So if you complete the primary mission, you'll get certain intelligence tokens and also you'll get intelligence tokens if you complete these missions. So at the start of each mission you'll be able to assemble your squad with different uh, you can bring marines in and out you can equip them with different types of weapons um, but in this particular first mission because you've crashed you have a kind of starting squad that you begin with so let's say we, we the crash site is here and let's say we want to go back to base here but we'll we'll, we'll investigate this um point of interest and then maybe this one and we'll see where we get to depending on what happens mm -hmm. sure so your first decision is how do you move and you can move um left to right up or down on or diagonally um uh, there's different costs for doing them let's say we go uh this way first of all to here so the first thing we do once we've done movement is we need to work through what the impact of that movement is so first of all we need to see how long it took us to do that so because we move left to right we look at the leftmost icon which is a mountain so we look at the key here the mountain takes an hour to traverse, so we move the time forward an hour. It also says it costs you four stamina. So your squad has uh, a certain amount of stamina that they start each mission with. So we'll start on 12 in this one. So that costs us four stamina down to eight. When we get to this spot, you can no longer move. You have to camp and certain things happen when you camp. Um, then we need to work out how much fret our movement is created. Are we creating a lot of noise? How, how, how close are uh, the VC to us? Because if we get to one of these combat symbols, then we'll have to have a combat. So moving left to right always costs one um, fret. If we move diagonally, it will cost us three. And mm -hmm. then we roll this thing called the fret die. And depending on what color comes up, yellow costs an extra fret. 
if it had been green, it would have been no extra threat. If it had been uh, red, it had been uh, two extra threat. Then we then get onto the more narrative side of things, which you've gone for the more mechanical side of things, which is um, the kind of storylines. So if we'd have landed on one of uh, these um, major story events, we would have referred to the scenario booklet and read some text out, but we didn't. So we just do a standard encounter. Let me pull one out. We flip them and then you see what happens. So uh, in this one, uh, in the course of our travels, we've come across some huts. Maybe we should check out these shacks. So um, this is an encounter card. Um, you do one of these at the end of every movement, like I said, because it's a green one, as you see in the top right, it's voluntary. We can choose to do it or not. Uh, so let's see what happens on the right. If we choose to do it and we're successful, we're going to get some experience and do some searches. And if we're unsuccessful, we, at the worst case scenario, we might get a, a booby trap. Mm -hmm. So but what do you want to do? Do you want to um, investigate the huts or do you want to just keep on going home? Now, if it was me, I would just keep going home. But since we're on here, we've got to investigate these huts. Okay, all right. So the first thing to think <laughs> about is that um, what's the test modifier? You'll see that there's a yellow, a green, a yellow, and a red um, kind of lightning symbol, um, the left there. And that refers to the fret die. So we rolled a uh, yellow on the fret die so that means that there's no modifiers. If we would have rolled a green, the test would have been slightly easier. If we would have rolled a red, it could have been the, uh, the booby trap. If we trigger it, it was very bad, but it's a yellow. So first of all, we need to choose which Marine we want to put forward for this um, investigation. Who are we gonna send up to investigate these huts? Uh, and the um, symbol in the top right tells us that they'll be um, testing their intelligence. So we'll then have a look at which Marines we've got. So. You can see, uh, for example, uh, Cat Tamer has got an intelligence of four. That's the highest you can get at the moment. So shall we use Cat Tamer and send him you forward? You bet. You bet. Okay. So we're going to use Cat Tamer. So back to uh, this. Um, that's it. So we're using his intelligence four. So we're following, rolling four red die, uh, three blue die, and four white die. And if I show you this, this will give you a good idea about basically how tests work in general in, in a game of Purple Haze, because they're all kind of variants of this, including for combat. Um, um, yeah, this is great. You guys will see these, these type of tests with this dice where you have your blue trigger dice and then an, an opposed roll is with the whites and, uh, and then the red ones are like whatever your attribute is. So, yes, exactly. So basically what we're trying to do here, this isn't uh, going well for Cat Tamer. So we'll first see what, what the target dice are, the trigger dice are. So Cat Tamer got one success because he matched one. Mm -hmm. um, the opponent, which is, you know, for in this purposes, the, the threat, the booby trap, they got um, two. Now, in certain situations, you'd get certain re-rolls, but for this test, you don't get any re-rolls. So that is a, um, a net of negative one. So let's see what the impact is for Cat Tamer. Uh, if you see that's that one black pip, that means that he's triggered a booby trap and he will take um, two wounds. Mm -hmm. There's nothing he can do to avoid that. In other situations, um, he might be able to um, roll for cover or do other things. But in this case, he has triggered that booby trap lucky for cat tamer so he takes two wounds. So that's what he gets for being nosy yeah so you'll see here that he's actually got a health of six only and a mental resilience of seven so if he gets down to zero health um he will take a more serious injury so we might want to at some point he might want he's a medic so he might want to use his um first aid kit at some point to heal himself so right. that's that resolved um and then you would uh, continue again and I won't go for it all again but what I'll quickly say is what will happen if we get to this story point flip it over that says one so these were randomized but this says go to story event one so we'll go to sure. one and there's a bit of text which is you edge your way through the bushes trying to be as quiet as possible you know Charlie's out there the sweat rolls down your brow and you feel a bug on your neck but you try to ignore all of that. You've got to keep calm and stay focused. One of your Marines creeps over to you and whispers, boss, we've got one ahead. He ain't seen us yet. You squint your eyes, but you can't see anything. What do we do? Ask the Marine. You've got three options, two options. Sneak up and take a look. Be careful. This place is full of 
booby traps and other deadly shit. If you want to do that, you, you select a marine and you test their survivability. Option two, lay chili. Let's wait and see if he's got some friends with him, but be ready to rock and roll. If you want to do that, you test a marine's perception. I like the chili, baby. Okay, so you want to lay chili, so we've got to test a marine's uh, <laughs> perception. <laughs> That's part <laughs> of the like verbiage it. I love too. It's just like, oh yeah, we're laying chili. Yeah, exactly, let's lay chili. So let's go for um, white. Uh, he's got good perception. So again, um, what that says is um, it's actually uh, the same same test conveniently, which is uh, four opposing white white die, three blue, and because white's got a uh, perception of four, he's doing four red. Uh, and here, what we've got that's one, two successes, and uh, two failures. So that's uh, you both got. That's basically uh, a net zero. Mm -hmm. So the 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 storybook says if you get a success or a tie, go to paragraph five. Perfect. The wait lasts forever. What's taking that marine so long? Suddenly, the silence is broken by some kind of unintelligible shouting and cursing. You grip your rifle so hard your knuckles go white. You're ready to hit the deck and start firing, but then you see the sweaty but smiling face of one of your marines. Boss, it's the pilot of the second bird. Now, at this point, Bart, the game instructs you to get take two experience points. You've got some experience from that successful decision. Um, you also take a, um, a wounded mark, which I'll show in a second, and you note the keyword trust. So in the game of Purple Haze, uh, there's a lot of key phrases that you'll do. So you'll have, in certain situations, it will say, note down this key phrase, and you'll write it down on, on some uh, materials that will give you when you buy the game. Uh, and then later on, you might get to another event that says, if you have a certain keyword, do this if you don't do that. And that's how we create the kind of branching narrative. So this is the keyword trust. You exhale with relief and notice a slim figure standing directly behind your man. The pilot is bloody, his fatigue ripped in several places. He limps a little. Hey man, I'm so glad to see you, says the pilot. I'm trust. I saw your bird going down right before they zapped me. I woke up, heard Charlie talking nearby and got my ass out of the wreck. Don't know what happened to the others. The pilot shakes his head, but then his face hardens. We gotta get back there, man. Give me the map. I'll show you where it is. And then what happens is you, um, yeah, he tells you basically where the other chopper's gone down and you had this other decision point to it. And then you decide, well, where do we want to go to next? So that's how the kind of narrative unfolds. Perfect. Yep. And there's some questions coming in. So uh, Okay, let me come back to uh, let me look at this. And then Ron, so this is a solitaire game. Well, it can be. It's one to six because you could have individuals playing each Marine as well. So that's it. And then Vorpal, Vorpal, when uh, the guy was uh, looking through the huts, he's, he's screaming, airstrike, airstrike, airstrike. <laughs> <laughs> you can call in airstrikes in the game actually unfortunately you need a, a radio operator with a radio and because you've got a bunch of cherries in this first mission that is not <laughs> that's not possible yep. to do i'm afraid you're just trying to work your way back to safety uh trevor says how do y'all get to see you trevor and uh so no i think that's a perfect so and and to let the viewers know it is a it's a story related game think again think ambush as far as your decisions and as you're moving, but the tactical combat is not like ambush. Um, James, I'll let you, if you wanted to show that the way you do combat on a board, if you wanted to show, I can, uh, I can, yeah. let, we can show that again, because that is by far um, one of the most distinctive parts of this game. Sure. Okay. And I just say again, stress again, that, you know, what, what we're showing you now is, stuff that's still being constantly developed so it'll move on more but this will give you kind of like a general overview of what, what the combat looks like so when you're um the, the, you might get into a narrative situation which says begin a combat otherwise the, mechanically it will happen when uh, your threat level gets to one of these um combat icons what you then do is that let's get these annoying um you draw the top card of the combat deck and what we're looking at here is, first of all, in the top right, you'll see this, see there's two symbols like this, kind of like palm tree and a more conventional tree. And you, what you do is you check on the map to make sure that where your Marines are, which is here, there's a matching symbol. 
and that's just to make sure that you don't have a kind of like a obviously a city style combat in the jungle or vice versa but here we have a matching symbol with this tree so then we need to populate it with um, uh, VC opponents so what you'll do is um, you look at the uh, fret die and that tells you if you add an extra one and we do because it's yellow so we add one here so we'll put this here that's on a five Oh, what have I done? Okay, sorry. Choice. Oh, that's all right. Choice and what choice. you'll see is the little rings or the circles will show a die, and it maybe has the the numeral or the four pips. So it, it gets a white die with a four, and that's the strength of that location. But your battle card has four or five different VC, basically based on their strength of their die in different spots. Yep. Exactly. And uh, these are all very varied. And in different missions, you'll add different battle cards and uh, they get progressively harder. So um, what we need to do is um, look at Perfect. the uh, battle card. So first of all, this is a surprise attack. It says it in the top. Mm -hmm. um, so that first tells us if the um, initiative is on the zero spot, uh, um, the VC go first. Now, initiative always begins on the zero spot and normally because it's green that means the marine that normally means the marines get to act because it's a surprise attack that means the vc get to act so we'll first of all work out what the vc do and then i'll be able to show you how initiative combat work so we take um one of these tokens which is a vc token so this is a kind of weak starting attack but that's fine by us so um that says that we move the initiative marker four spaces towards the american side two three four and then that's just basically one, they've done one bit of damage to one of your Marines. So you roll to see which Marine is taking damage. It's a uh, Marine five. So fun Benny Fungus. So he has an op opportunity to do a cover save. So mm -hmm. we'll see how good he is at taking cover. And as they become more experienced, they get better at this. So what you're looking for is matching of any type. Uh, so he didn't get any matching. If he'd have had two ones, uh, then he would have better to avoid one one damage. If he'd had three ones, it'd been two damage, but he didn't, so he takes a damage. Now it goes to the Marines go. So, Bart, what do you want to do? Let's see. Um, Weapon-wise, I can't quite see, um, but let's do what I know is great. So we've got uh, one of our guys with an M16. I want him to dump the whole mag, which will allow me to basically target two different vc at the same time okay great so let's use um clear white so first of all uh how does combat finish it finishes in one of three situations most normally it'll be when all six of your marines have activated but it could also be if you kill all the vc on the combat card or if you only have three marines left in your squad so we'll move over to say that he's activated so we're going to use his um M m16 so let's look at what this card's telling us Along the top, you see they've got the blue band, and that says um, you, you use up a clip of ammo to do a, uh, a burst shot. You could also do a more targeted shot, which is the cream symbol, um, and that wouldn't use your ammo, uh, but that does less, you're rolling less dice for that. So we're going to use this ammo. That's gone from the game. Um, and then we have to choose where we're aiming. So uh, we can choose any of these either of these two spots where there's this red burst symbol so where do you want to go for um let's see i can't quite see it but i know um okay there we go so yeah the uh the burst uh let's go with those ones on the uh on the right there the the right and uh, like the one just kind of above that cream yeah center. Yeah, I think that makes sense because this one uh, with the star symbol, uh, that's quite a powerful one. He can throw a grenade, which can do a lot of damage. So it's quite good yes. to try and take him out quickly. So first of all, we just need to make sure that the um, M16 can do that within range. So you'll see that on the on this card, there's tr different triangles under each circle. And that's kind of range. So one triangle means they're kind of, if you like, in the first row. And then you've got two triangles in the second row, for three in the third row. So if you look at, for example, this uh, the grenade launcher, the M16, you've got, um, they can't shoot in the first row. You know, they're, they're a ranged weapon. You can't shoot up close. But there's no problem for the M, uh, M16. It can shoot up to three spaces. So uh, that's telling us roll six red dice with a re-roll. But first of all, we move the initiative five spaces towards one, 
two, three, four, five. So we know that the VC are going to go next. And, and I love that part of this because we could have not emptied the whole mag and, and done just more of a targeted shot, but that would have been one location and it only would have moved that, um, that initiative four spaces, meaning, you know, the Marines could have taken yet another shot. So there's these nice decisions, even with, with how much you're going to unload and how that's going to work tactically. Exactly. Yeah. And then as you go on, there'll be uh, more examples of that. The uh, the VC will have, uh, for example, they might have an MVA command, which means their initiative costs, they, they cost them less initiative to do certain things. So it starts mm. becoming even more important. So then we just do another kind of role. And again, we're looking for matching. Um, so how's he done here? Uh, he's got so far one. That's uh, middling, not great, but he has a reroll in this situation. Yes. So a reroll. Uh, well, that's not too bad, but I'm so, well, that's, that's okay, actually, so it's five hits. So then basically we have a decision. We can either kill this one guy with, ooh, with that's on five, or we can put take out this guy that's got four and put one on the one that's got five, or we can spread them evenly. So probably let's, I think what we do is, yeah, you tell me, Bart, sorry. Yeah, let's drop that guy that can put a grenade on us. Yeah, we'll drop him and we'll move him down by one. Uh, and then... Just, just quickly, just finally, finally, I'll show you what's on this board. So basically, on this board, you're keeping track of how many you kill, and for every two that you kill, that represents in an abstract way that the um, uh, the VC are getting less efficient. So every two that you kill, every action the VC do. Um, that's not a good example. That, for example, this action that would cost them six initiative rather than uh, five, five to do. And um, and then at the end, uh, you work out. Let's say we've managed to kill four of them. Uh, you work out how much mental damage the Marines have taken from their physical wounds, if any. Uh, then the threat goes down because obviously you've taken out a bunch of VC by a certain amount, depending on how well you've done. You get a certain amount of experience and then you draw a search card um, to see what you've discovered there. And in this case, the VC has scampered off, but they've left a, a you know an Arvin clip of something. So you get to add one bit of um, equipment of a value of one weight to your squad. Perfect. Yeah. So let me come back over to us here. So I think that's, so a couple questions, Vorpal, role-playing game, role-playing esque. So it's not a, uh, both James and I, we talked, we both play fake core role-playing stuff. So it's not obviously uh, dedicated role-playing. And again, it reminds me more of like what you're doing in ambush or B-17 queen of the skies a little bit, probably more ambush where your, your guys can get better as you go, which means that your actions have consequences because you want to level your Marines up so that you can do or use different weapons or have an RTO that can call in strikes. So it has that role-playing feel. The story elements are again, very ambush like where you make a decision and it has a branching storyline based on the situation. And then I love the fact that you know, like trust, you're writing down trust. And then later on, it might be that, you know, I don't know, I'll make up something here that uh, you, you need a resupply on ammo. And it turns out trust is the helicopter pilot because you got him back and he's willing to go into a hot LZ dump ammo to you. I'm just making this up. This is a part of the scenario, but you can see how a branching storyline could be like, you know, Hey, if you've no trust, that guy will go the extra mile to get uh, evac in on you or something so yeah that's um, exactly that's exactly a really good example but you know they fit they fit that on the head there it's not role playing in the sense because although each of the marines got their own personality you don't control the different they don't you don't say oh benny says this or someone else says says that so there's not it's not a role playing game in that kind of like traditional sense um but you you there's certainly capacity for you to say okay well i think we should send benny forward because he was really good last time or you know they develop their own personalities yes if you like but not in not in a kind of like in the way of a role play game so yeah more like a 100 percent you described yeah yep 100 percent. and that that's actually um you know when you guys even uh adrian sent me saying hey this is kind of what this is are you interested i was like oh yeah this is you know, I loved Ambush back in the 80s, and I thought, how much is this going to be like it? And uh, and I wasn't looking for a copy, carbon copy of it, but I was definitely like, when I saw these branching storylines and the narrative that 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 unfurls, um, you know, there's definitely these directions in there with the randomization of like in this one, there's the three different 
randomized tokens that you don't know what you're going to run into. And, uh, and then you're, you're, you're deciding, well, do I even, man, I, I got a bunch of cherries with me. I just need to get back to base. I don't want to go out of the way and even hit some of these things, but then you might, you'll never have trust. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, well, yeah, exactly. And, and and one thing, like I mentioned, so it's not, we're still experimenting with this, so I'm not going to say it's definitely going to make the final cut, but one of the things we're thinking about is so that you have a backstory and um, you, on, you, you know, before you begin the campaign, you read that backstory as a group or individually and you say, okay, well, and you get given different motivations. Like, so is my motivation that I never want to lose another Marine because everything that went wrong before, or is it actually I want revenge or am I trying to climb up the ladder? And that might impact the victory points you get at the end of, end of the um uh, the campaign so that kind of helps guide you a little bit about okay well no my guy is he's he you know he, he just wants he's a careerist so he's going to do whatever the general says regardless of um you know what it means for, for, for his marines to so see and that also plays a lot of replayability because you can go back again and say actually this time i'll do something different so that's something we're experimenting to give it even even more kind of motivation for why you're doing certain things no yeah i mean and then being in the in the vietnam war conflict which is is in my opinion from a war gamer side not that there aren't vietnam games out there but this is the first one that kind of scratches that similar itch that that ambush or battle him did um where you're moving through that jungle environment and i loved as i was looking through the maps i actually thought wow this this is looks like a city map way Ted offensive was exactly what I was thinking of. And there's so many things. If you're down in the Delta or if you're up in a, in the city or, I mean, I was like, wow, this is, uh, I mean, there's all kinds of potential here. And, yeah. uh, and, and then I, like I said, I like that grid movement because immediately I was like, okay, I know how the grids work. And I remember thinking, well, how are they going to handle diagonal movement? Is it even allowed? And then of course it is, but it's, it is, it's, you're, you're doing that three, um, as far as alerting, I forget what it's called, but the alerting of the, of the, the VC basically, as you move diagonally. Yeah. The threat. So, yeah, exactly. More on the threat. The track. threat. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so now I know looking on BGG, this is listing. I know it's going to go on a, a Kickstarter, I believe. Is that correct? Yeah. Well, it's game found. Which is game a, found. Um, Got it. Yeah, it's another. It's another well, that makes company. sense. Yeah, Polish company, Polish Anglo. I love Game Found actually, way over Kickstarter. So yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, then it talked about. I know all these are probably just limited projections, but BGG shows a 2023 release. Obviously, with the slowdowns and everything going on, that's all flexible as well. Mm. So let's see. There's a question here. Let's see. Vorpal, um, he's got this, of course. Chief Chief Dreams of Sergeant Rock. I do love, I love Sergeant Rock as a kid. Um, and then sure enough, he beat us to the punch. He was already thinking game found. So uh or well, unless he doesn't know what it is, in which case it's a, it's another crowdfunding. Oh, platform. got it, got it. Yes, that is what he's saying. He hasn't heard of it. So game found, um, it was uh, Awaken Realms, uh, one of the guys that works with Awaken Realms in Poland was also they were they set it up as a um oh um it's like uh it used to be just a a way for you to track your surveys and stuff after a kickstarter and they were so good that they've even they then morphed into what it was their iss vanguard was the first game that you could actually back kickstarter style and uh, i think it got like six million dollars or something um, yeah, yeah. The other good thing about it, and a bit of a plug for following uh, Purple Haze on GameFound, is that it gives you a bit more kind of like um, flexibility. So if you start following the GameFound campaign before it launches, so it's launched on January 25th, yeah. if you start following Purple Haze and GameFound, uh, if you sign up to it now, you get a five euro discount if you decide to actually back the game. So it gives you these kind of things as well. So there's like no reason not to follow yes. Purple Haze, because even if you don't like it, that's fine. But if you do, you're getting a five euro discount on, on, on off the cost of it. Yep. Yeah. And then they then it'll like tell you, Hey, this is going to go live in 24 hours. And what it's very good about being able to get information out really a little bit of the excitement. And then, like you said, there's a little five, five euro, $5 discount. If you yeah. do end I'm, up. Yeah. And we're actually at the moment running a narrative campaign as part of the build up to it. So on that, if you're following on GameFound, you can actually um there's a, there's a small scenario where you, as the, it's kind of like a crowd choice, you, the, the, the followers vote, 
do we do this it's called Ho Chi Minh Sandals and it's like you're sent out on a patrol trying to find a, a mortar team and you're given different options like we've been doing under the narrative here and the, the, the followers decide which they want to do and that creates a new storyline. So Vorpal's already saying he wants it and then he loves miniature gaming as well so then he'll he'll oftentimes morph rules into using his 60 millimeter uh, Vietnam miniatures as well. Mm, that's small, yep, great. Well, yeah. I hope you enjoy it, Vorpal, if you buy it. Before we started, Vorpal, I mentioned your name to James, and I said you would probably be in here because immediately I was thinking, okay, we've got Vietnam, we've got story element, we've got tactical combat. I thought I would be stunned if Vorpal didn't go nuts over this game. <laughs> <laughs> I know we're getting into, we're getting close. We're at 40 minutes. We were going to try to keep this between 45 and an hour. Um, is there, uh, we wanted to talk uh, just generally about Phalanx as well. Is there anything you wanted to cover extra first on Purple Haze? And then if you wanted to just cover anything in general from Phalanx. Um, no, so Purple Haze, just to say that it's, like I said, it's coming out, uh, the, the campaign's launching on the 25th of January, running through to mid-February. Uh, and there'll be other kind of stuff announced in the campaign. Um, also, keep a lookout um, for Phalanx and Phalanx Social Media because we're doing a podcast. We've done a podcast with Dr. Eric Villard, who's the U.S. Army's uh, one of his their top historians, and he's um, their specialist in the Vietnam War. And we had a really good discussion with him about the history of the Marines in Vietnam, um, mm. and uh, as part of the kind of like background to help you really get immerse yourself. So keep a lookout for that on the Phalanx channels. Be interesting. Um, and yeah, go. So yeah, yeah they, definitely. I've I've been reading. So Hackworth is uh, "Steal My Soldiers' Hearts," and then this actually that sent me to this book on uh, platoon medic, which was actually one of the medics that he even references uh, in his book. And um, for those that haven't, um, he also did about face, which just got a reprint um, because oh shoot. Uh, the, the Navy SEAL commander, um, uh, Willink. Willink? Yeah, I think it's, uh, maybe I got it all right. The, he's got his own YouTube and podcast. He loves About Face and the story. So, you know, Vietnam era uh, books are out there as well, but you want to see some cool stuff. This book right here, I've been referencing it to many folks. So, Okay, that's yeah, that's cool. And I would also just recommend uh, this one I'm reading called Matterhorn, which is an, a novel, but it's it's following a, a bunch of Marines in in, um, in in the north part of South Vietnam and the trials. So it's kind of really purple hazy. So yeah, that's that's great. Um, so uh, yeah, just in, I'll just take five minutes just to quickly uh, run your viewers sure. through, through a bit what's going on with with Phalanx at the moment. So um, we haven't got much time, so I won't give you the whole whole spiel, but just to let you know what's coming down the track for us obviously um your people will be familiar with um uh some of the games we've done we've done already um coming down down the track um we've got obviously purple haze uh which is launching on 25th january um and it's still possible to do late pledge for coalitions which is our uh napoleon napoleon kind of era very high diplomacy negotiation backstabbing kind of like diplomacy done right time gate type game it's, um, right. it's, it's yeah. really good fun and that's still available to late pledge and there's a bunch of expansions for that uh, and then we've also planned to do at some point um and a, a kind of like a a next um expansion to uh, race the rhine and we've got a game coming out about um uh the viking viking england at some point down the line which is mm. visually stunning uh and then um it's being delivered now um successors and Hannibal so successes full edition um and um which is a, a kind of a, obviously it's a reworking of the um Avalon Hill GMT type games um but done absolutely beautifully um and uh Hannibal Hamilcar uh, a new version of that which has kind of changed some of the rules around Hamilcar race to Moscow which is this um Euro style type game where you're one of the free army groups uh of of, of germany during Bob Rossa trying to get to to moscow and total domination which is a kind of a 90 minute playing uh epic world war ii in 90 minutes game and then right. uh, we've also got these things called make games happen which is um our equivalent if you like of like the gmt p500 um and you can kind of pre-order these games and there's some really interesting ones there freedom which is like um a uh a cdg um Greek um, War of Independence 
game right. uh, which just won a Charlie, and then uh, some other Napoleonic game, another Napoleonic game called Pursuit of Victory, and a, hex, a couple of Hex Encounter games. Um, so yeah, there's some exciting stuff. Um, I'll give you just you can see some of the visuals of some of these games coming coming down the track for for Phalanx uh, next year and being released. So you'll be able to buy successors at retail in the next month or two. Same with yeah. Mr. Moscow. To, and same with Total Domination, and then we've got some of these classic games. Fire in the Sky is being reprinted, so you'll be able to pick nice. up some copies of that. I don't know if you played that Pacific War game, Freedom. And these are some games you can back. Iron Blood Snow and Mud, it plays in 60 minutes. It's like an Eastern Front Hex Encounter kind of um, intro level war game, which is really interesting. Uh, it's got really interesting kind of transport and logistics things about it, really enjoyable game. So there's lots of stuff, I mean, and then you'll see, you know, as ever with Phalanx, we really focus on making games really good. That's kind of a key, I love that key map for us. Right <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that's, that's just some of the games we've got coming down the track. So you can follow us on Facebook and Twitter and whatever your social media, and you'll be able to see, see more of those. Beautiful. Love it. So great. Thank you for coming on. I know you, I know there's other things going on in the world that always make linking up interesting. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for having me. It's been really uh, interesting. And I hope that this sweated people's appetite for Purple Haze and other oh, Phalanx products. Bet. You bet. And I'll be doing a video. I'll be uh, starting to film it um, maybe even today or tomorrow because I, I got through and 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 really understanding. I would say one of the more interesting things, because a lot of it, I was like, OK, familiar with this, familiar with this. And when we got into I love the chip pulling where you're pulling out the VC chits and then that's telling you what kind of attack. And then if you pull out one that's a, a special or it's got a red then it triggers off whether it's that grenade being thrown, which is why you might want to target that guy early because if you pull one of those, so there was all those, all the decisions layered in. And then those battle boards, again, for folks watching right now, you know, as I, as I got it, I thought, how, how is combat going to work here? And so when I saw those cards and I, you know, I, before I even read the rules, I'll just try to kind of grok the materials to see what, what, it, what it's making sense. And I remember looking at it thinking, well, these triangles, they, they got to be range just based on kind of where they're placed and how they're framed. Uh, I remembered not knowing what the rings were with the multicolors. And then as soon as I read the rules and that threat die, if the threat's up, then more VC are coming into your battle card. I mean, there was just a lot of layered uh, things on, on decision space on, how how is a battle going to break down and how well that card tells you a snapshot of the story and then my choice on well do i use that m79 thumper and i pop way out here to try to get that guy that's a sniper because he's sniping us every time somebody else takes an action you know so again the layered decisions that are going on with the battle space was what you know i i Again, I lightly compared it to Ambush, but of course the combat has nothing to do like Ambush. It's these battle cards that are that are bringing a whole conflict into one card, if that makes, you know, if that's a good description. Yeah, it is. And just to say that um, in the final version that comes out, there'll be even more to it than that. There'll be a lot of kind of stuff that you can do as well. So really? that's, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. We want to kind of like develop so you can, you can develop certain skills to use in certain battles and you know, certain tactics you can apply once you get a certain amount of experience. So they'll be, you'll have other layers to it as well. Very cool. Very cool. Well, thank you again, James. And okay, I'll let no you worries. back to your family. Cheers. Hey, uh, Thanks so much, Bart. Thanks for having me. Uh, all right. I'm going to end her now. Thanks. See you guys later.